I just got the Omnipod 5 starter kit sent to me and there is only one thing left to do and that's put the device on. I'm a little bit nervous because I've never used a tubeless insulin pump system and I understand if you are too, if you're putting this on for the first time, but I'm gonna try to take you through everything step by step. In the box, I found a quick start guide, a brand new controller, AKA PDM device and 11 Omnipod 5 pod units. You can wear each pod for 72 hours. So the starter kit should provide me with enough pump supplies for about a month. There is also a plastic cover that you can put on your controller, a USB charger and a few pieces of overtape. I think these pot pads are made from the same material and by the same company as the pot adhesive. They're just bigger. To put your first pot on, you will need a new pot, the controller, approved insulin such as Novorapid or Humalog, an alcohol wipe, an overtape if you'd like to use one, and of course a Dexcom G6 CGM sensor and transmitter if you'd like to use the system in auto mode, which I would definitely recommend you to do. I had already created my Omnipod ID account and went through the required training. Just for your information though, the system doesn't put any roadblocks in your way. So you can make it work even if you haven't completed the official training yet, or even when you are outside of the US. But please don't skip the training just because I told you this. Before you start your first pod, you need to create your basal profile. You also need to set your target glucose, your insulin to carb ratio, your correction factors, duration of insulin action, and a couple more things. You can see what parameters I'm entering on the screen but you should always set the parameters provided to you by your healthcare provider, depending on your individual needs. The system finally wants me to set up a new pod. So I'm gonna go ahead and do it. I'm gonna open a brand new pod package and I will need to fill it with insulin. So I'll put the needle on top of the plastic cartridge like so, clean the insulin vial with the alcohol wipe like this. Then I pull some air in the cartridge and then push it into the vial. Air bubbles going in and now we can pull the insulin in the cartridge. By the way, the needle is so short that it can come out of the vial easily as you are pulling the insulin in. I'm definitely not a big fan of this. Look how short it is, crazy. The minimum amount of insulin you need to pull in is about 80 units and the maximum capacity of each pot is 200 units. I filled it all the way to 200, but later on I realized I really only need about 120, 140 units for three days. Just put in a little bit more than you think you will need for the three days. Don't need to fill it all the way up. Now I need to get rid of all the air bubbles air bubbles out. We need to stick the needle into this little hole on the back side of the pot, right where this big arrow is pointing to and push the insulin in. This is the first time I'm doing this with an Omnipod and you can see my hands are shaking a bit. I'm a bit nervous. It seems that I did it right. I could hear the two beeps, which is always a good sign. Hit next, the pot will start priming and you will hear it clicking like this. It will click about 20 times. And once you hear this sound, it is ready to be applied. Now I can finally clean the site and there is one more cool thing you can do with Omnipod and that is to record the site where you are entering the pot. I'm putting the pot on my upper left arm so I'm gonna choose that side and record it on the controller. When I'll be doing my next site change, the system will show me the history of the previous sites and that will help me to rotate the sites regularly which is always a good move. Now I'm gonna remove this plastic tab. You really need to pull quite strongly. Oops, don't worry, you will not break anything. We'll check that the cannula is not sticking out and we can remove the paper backing of the adhesive. And I'm gonna apply the pot on my arm exactly on that spot which I previously cleaned with the alcohol wipe. This was the first time I was doing this and I was recording myself on camera. So you can see I was really nervous and of course I messed up. Look how I folded the adhesive. Does that happen to you too or is it just me? Anyway, I decided to put the pot pal on. Maybe I will get the overpatch stick straight. Well, of course I didn't. I folded this one too, just on the opposite side. <laughs> Not great, but it's what it is, keeping it real. Now I can tap start on the controller, confirm that the pot is in place and that the cannula can be inserted. You can definitely feel it, but 
it doesn't really hurt. It's just like any other cannula or injection. And I'm sure you've done some before. Now we need to confirm that the cannula is inserted properly and that the pink color on the top of the pot is visible. Next, the system will ask us if we want to connect our CGM. Well, of course we want to do that. That's why we're here, right? We need to put in the Dexcom G6 transmitter number. I didn't have my G6 on me when I started the Omnipod 5 setup. So I simply took the transmitter number from the back of the transmitter. Then I applied a new Dexcom G6 sensor and started it in the Dexcom G6 app. After I applied my sensor, I realized I made another mistake because I put the devices on my opposite arms. When you place them like this, they sometimes lose connection and the pod stops receiving data from the sensor. It's much better to place them in one line of sight so there is not so much of your body between them. For example, Omnipod here, Dexcom here or Omnipod here, Dexcom here. That works really well. Just not the way I placed them in this video. This was really not my day. By the way, with the Omnipod 5 system, you cannot start a new Dexcom sensor with the Omnipod controller or with your Dexcom reader. You really need the Dexcom G6 app on your phone to do that, otherwise it won't work. In case you have your sensor and transmitter already on as you are applying a new Omnipod 5, it's not really a problem, you can still pair them. You just need the transmitter number which you can find either on the transmitter transmitter box or in your Dexcom G6 app. The pairing process is the same. In my case, I had to wait two hours for the sensor to warm up. Then I saw my first Dexcom reading on my Omnipod controller. And when I did, I was not really happy about it. 218. When you start getting the reading from the sensor, you can finally switch to the auto mode, which is kind of what we are here for, right? You could see that when I was putting my first Omnipod 5 on, it didn't go without a couple hiccups. And I hope you will not make these mistakes I made when I was putting it on. It was not really my day, but today I'm on my Omnipod 5 number 5, Omnipod 5 number 5, my fifth Omnipod 5, and I actually start liking it. But my first week was a bit choppy. I made many mistakes and I had to make many adjustments to my settings. If you don't want to make the same mistakes, then definitely check out this video where I will share all my Omnipod 5 mistakes and all my favorite tips and hacks. Don't forget that you can chat with me one-on-one -on -one if you have any questions or you can just support me on my Patreon. Link is down below. Ciao.